So you can imagine if you have a 230 amp hour 48 volt battery here, fully charged, 100% charged, it is on almost 55 volts. And you have a very small battery here, like a 100 amp hour battery, totally discharged at around 44, 45 volts. So there's almost 10 volt difference between these batteries. And you connect them in parallel. Can you imagine how much current there flows? <sighs> So when I finished yesterday's video after the second discharge test, I actually kept filming because I discovered this feature of the Pace BMS here. So I'll show you the footage right now. Okay, I'm not sure if this is a good idea, but we want to do an experiment now. Check out my battery that told me that the current limiter of the BMS will kick in if the charge current goes over 100 amps. And they also said, well, if you reduce your overcurrent protection to say 50 amps, it will kick in then. So I have set it now to 40 amps. Yeah. And we want to see what happens. I have written the information to the BMS. So alarm sits on 30 and protection on 40. Yeah. And because we have the Jacuzzi battery completely empty at the moment. So if I turn on the QSO battery now, we will have them in parallel with the Jacuzzi battery. And let's see what happens then, how much current there is actually flowing. Let's see. Something beeps, 20, it goes to 20. That's the current limiter now of the BMS kicking in, 20.6. Because otherwise we would have a huge current going into the battery. So this is another protection feature of the Jacuzzi battery. I think the other BMSs have this as well, but it works. But this one is a real protection feature now here. So it kicks in if the charging current goes over your... I'm not sure if, this is the, if it's the alarm or if it's the actual protection. I think it's the protection. Yeah, only a charge current of 20 amps limited by the BMS. And you can see this here. We've got a 53.4 volts in the QSO battery, which is charging. And we've got only 51 volts in the Jackie battery. See, there's still three volt difference. And this is not something like voltage drop or some situation here. This is the protection of the BMS. Pretty cool. First time I'm seeing this actually. Usually you don't use it because the batteries are not that different if you have them in parallel. But um, especially because we have like 280 ampere hours in parallel with 100 ampere hours, that's quite a big difference in capacity. And this is another protection feature then of the BMS of the battery then. So there's the current limiter. See this little board up here? This is like a PVM controller. Yeah, and you can feel this one is actually warm. So this one is working hard now to limit the current to 20 amps only. Yeah, we've got some inductors and capacitors on here. And basically it works like a PVM controller. It turns on and off your supply very quickly. BMS software, we are charging with uh, 20 amps. So the current limiter is actually active at the moment. And we can see this down here as well, charging limiter open. So it is actually activated. I can turn it off manually and the current will shoot up to something when the BMS turns off then. I'll turn this off by three and you watch the current up here, right? So three, two, so I turn it off at zero. So I'm counting down. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Do we do it on three or? Do it. One, two, three, then do it. Three, two, one, off. There, beeps. And now the charge MOSFET has turned off because we have exceeded to 40 amps. So it is actually protecting the battery from being overcharged from too much current. Oh, everything is beeping now here. So it is actually protecting the battery and the BMS yet from too high of a current. It says charge over current protection. And after a few seconds, the BMS turns on the MOSFETs again, and then we will see another inrush current into the BMS, and it will turn off immediately again. There. 70, 70 amps, something 70 amps. And we set 40 amps as the maximum, so it's actually protecting the battery now. 
So on the next cycle, we um, start our charge limiter again and see what happens then. There we go. Protecting and reducing the current to 20 amps only into the battery. So I charge the battery with 20 amps now until the voltages level out a bit and then the current goes down anyway. Pretty cool feature. I like it. So um, this was a bit of a surprise to me yesterday when I found this feature with the current limiter. I always thought these BMSs limit the current when the battery is fully charged. As we have seen with the Seplos BMS. Yeah, once we are getting close to the full charge voltage, it actually limits the current going into the battery. We can see this here on the Seplos BMS. I have shown you this yesterday already on the Pace BMS. This inductor here plus these capacitors is a PVM module and they combined are the current limiter. The BMS actually limits actively the current going into the batteries. And because the Seplos BMS limits the current to 10 amps, there's only one inductor, two capacitors, maybe three. While here in the Pace BMS, oh, I can't really. while here in the Pace BMS, we have two inductors and a lot more of capacitors on this um, current limiting board. And you can also see this heatsink here with the MOSFETs underneath, which are switching the power on and off. Really like in a PVM controller. So this limiter in the Pace BMS is a bit beefier than in the Steplos BMS because the Pace BMS does a 20 amp limit charging limit then. And obviously it kicks in when the overcurrent protection is active. So if you go over the 100 amps the BMS sits on by default, this limiter kicks in and then reduces the charging current to only 20 amps. So with this current limiting feature activated, the BMS is actually not shutting down your charging process. It only limits it. So the, the Seplos has an active and passive current limiting function. Active means you go into the BMS settings and turn it on by default, and then it limits your charging current to 10 amps all the time. Regardless what it is, it is limited to 10 amps. This is the active limiting. The passive limiting is if your charging current reaches the overcurrent warning, overcurrent alarm, it reduces the charging current to 10 amps. It keeps this for five minutes and then it checks again if there is still more current coming in. So every five minutes, the Seplos BMS checks if your charging current is still over the limit, over the warning threshold you have set in the settings. And if so, well, it limits again to 10 amps for another five minutes and keeps checking forever until your charging current goes under the warning threshold. And I think this is a very underestimated safety feature. While any of these consumer grade BMSs, the, um, the Heltec BMS or the JK BMS or the Overkill BMS, they would just turn off if you hit the overcurrent threshold you have set in the settings. They would just disconnect your charger, right? This could end up very badly for your solar charge controllers and you could destroy them because all of a sudden the battery is missing and you're still connected to the high DC voltage of your solar panels. And some solar charge controllers cannot handle this and just burn out. Well, with any of these um, more industrial, like, like the Seplos BMS, for example, or the Pace BMS and the Jackie battery, they don't disconnect the battery, they just limit the charge current. Or the next scenario is you want to extend your battery tower with another battery. Usually you have to bring them up to the same voltage before you connect them. Well, with these BMSs, you don't have to. You just connect them in parallel and the BMSs regulate this themselves. Well, on the other hand, I've got the battery shelf running for over a year now here and never had any issues with um, cross currents from one battery bank into another one or something. Even if you turn one of the battery banks off accidentally and forgot all about it for a couple of days. You may remember this video I made. And then after turning it on, we almost hit the limit of the overkill solar with over 120 amps. So in this situation, one of these current limiting BMSs then would have no trouble and slowly balances your battery banks against each other again. So yeah, I just wanted to share what I found out last night. And um, well, this is all very new for me because I always thought this current limiting is only when the battery is fully charged, so it slows down your charging. It is also a big safety feature for paralleling these batteries.
Yeah, and today, and today I have received um, a small package from a viewer named Ben from uh, Germany in Braunschweig. No, not Ben. Rob. Rob! And he not only sent me a genuine Victron battery BMS type A cable, because he saw me building my own. Yeah, this one here. Where we just cut the cables and solder them in a different order to match the Victron cable. And it still works. He also sent a type B cable over which we may need for other BMSs then to test with the Victron system. So I've got now a really long type A cable. Yeah, back in the day, I only bought the short type A cable because I'm tight. And he also included a genuine Victron CNN fuse with 325 amps. I think this is the one, this is the original one, which actually goes into the Lynx shunt. And he had two of them and has sent me one over. I mean, this is an $80 piece of equipment. These are not cheap. They are super heavy. But this is not the important stuff he sent over. The really important stuff is this. <laughs> so he actually went to the Oettinger Brewery in Braunschweig and got me some merch. This is nice keyring here from Oettinger and also some beer coasters. There you go. Isn't that great? That is fantastic! And some of them will get a special place here on my Oettinger and Jägermeister wall. In the off creek garage in sunny hot Australia. And of course you also sent a letter with some kind words. So thank you very much Rob for your surprise parcel. I was not expecting any of that really. <laughs> it is a big surprise and I really appreciate your effort to send this all over here to a sunny hot Australia. There's actually some value in all this stuff. And I'm almost 100% sure, probably 99.99999, that these are the only Oettinger coasters here in Australia. Original from the Oettinger Brewery in Braunschweig, Germany. <laughs> Thank you very much, Rob. Okay guys, back to the topic. Current limiting function. Leave your comments down below. What do you think about this safety feature in these BMSs? I actually wanted to show this footage at the end of yesterday's video, but the video was already fairly long. And I was so surprised to discover this feature, to, to actually experience this feature. So I'm still discharging the Jackie battery here, negative four amps, and I'm turning on the QSO battery right now. The Sepplos batteries are still off. And we've got a voltage here of um, 53. This one beeps for a moment and then shows us again the 20 amps only. And it goes into a limiting function. Current limiter. Amazing. I know guys, I'm getting far too excited about this. I just don't hope all of you knew about this feature already, but me. <laughs> Anyway, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your great support for sending me sending me um, beer coasters from Germany. And of course, thank you very much for all these wonderful and beautiful people out there who have donated to the channel, keeping the show running. And until the next video, guys, when we actually start with the Franken battery. Until then, you stay charged, stay safe. And thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye bye. Current limiter. Yeah, who would have thought? Yeah, by the way, the Pace BMS does the same. After a couple of minutes, it tries again to charge with um, full power. So it disables the charging limiter. And if the charging current stays under the overcurrent protection setting, it, uh, it leaves the charge limiter actually off then. See, now it charges with 27. No limiter necessary anymore because the voltages of these two batteries have now come together and therefore the current is lower. It's good, right? <laughs>